And before we leave the RPG category, there's one more piece of important news. A legendary RPG name is on its way back to Nintendo Portables, a franchise that's been gone for quite a while. After going dark six years ago, 2010 will bring a new dawn with Golden Sun DS. E3, 2009. Nintendo of America president Reggie fils announces a new sequel to the Golden Sun series, Golden Sun DS later released in 2010 as Golden Sun Dark Dawn. The series had gone dark on us for a long time. What we didn't know, though, was that even with this new entry, it would soon after go dark again. What's going on, guys? Stevie here with Lucky Crit, and today we're talking about what happened to the Golden Sun series. Golden Sun and Golden Sun The Lost Age were two critically acclaimed Game Boy Advance Golden Era JRPGs developed by Camelot Software Planning, a Japanese video game developer best known for their work on the Shining series as well as the Mario Golf and Tennis games. If you were anything like me, you grew up playing the Game Boy Advance and hopefully you were lucky enough to cross paths with one of these games. Golden Sun and Golden Sun The Lost Age quickly went on to become critically acclaimed, selling hundreds of thousands of copies in America and Japan and received Metacritic ratings of 91 and 86% respectively. In 2007, Golden Sun was named 24th Best Game Boy Advance Game in IGN's feature reflecting upon the Game Boy Advance's lifespan, and The Lost Age was ranked 78 on IGN's Reader's Choice Top 100 Games Ever. These games, originally slated for the Nintendo 64, had taken the Game Boy Advance by storm and provided the console with some of the best RPGs in its lifespan. The game sparked immense discussion, praise, and many lifelong fans, still itching for more, even today. But even after The Lost Age's successful release in 2002, many years would go by before we ever got a glimpse into the world of Wayard again. In an E3 2003 interview with PGC, the Takahashi brothers, responsible for Golden Sun and The Lost Age, had this to say. And for us, as far as the whole Golden Sun setting, the world, the storyline for us, in our minds, Golden Sun 1 and 2 are prologues to the real event yet to come. So those games are created, again, from our viewpoint, as a way of introducing this world to the game players. In the years since the first two Golden Sun entries, fans had become restless, theorizing when or if we would in fact see another game in the series. Some even going as far as to create several elaborate hoaxes, such as Golden Sun Alex's Road and Golden Sun The Solar Soothsayer. When these hoaxes were proven to be fake, the creators explained that they had created the images and stories in an attempt to stir up conversation amongst Golden Sun fans and hopefully cause Camelot to notice the continued popularity of their games and be prompted to make a new entry in the series. Then, in 2010, with fan speculation and excitement at an all-time high, Golden Sun Dark Dawn was released on the Nintendo DS. While the game built off of the core structure and foundation of the Golden Sun series, overall, it was not as well received scoring 79% on Metacritic in comparison to its predecessor scores of 91 and 86. Why was this, though? Well, Dark Dawn is set 30 years after the events of the first two games, and follows original protagonist Isaac's son, Matthew, as he sets out across Wayard, which, due to the events at the end of the Lost Age, has been completely reformed. Though this was a great way to have the player explore Wayard once more, uncovering all of its new treasures and secrets, some fans were disappointed that the entire world was not traversable due to events in the story, even though this was also the case in the original Golden Sun, and the areas left inaccessible in the original were explorable in its sequel. Even though Dark Dawn was set up to echo its predecessor, fans were no longer buying the continent restrictions. Some fans were also disappointed with the inability to backtrack at certain points in the story, resulting in permanently missed djinn or summon tablets if they hadn't found them all along the way. The game didn't do much in terms of indicating these points of no return either, so missing content was actually a very likely occurrence. Even though this was the case with the original Golden Sun, and thus makes the successor even more like the original, it infuriated many players. As a personal side note, I remember someone on my floor in college that was so angry about missing a summon tablet early on that he actually used a cheat to allow him to recross the continent and go back to get it. Within this new Wayard were also handfuls of new ancient lore and history which, while very cool and enjoyable on a mythos level, did not make absolute sense with Golden Sun 1 and 2. Even though Wayard had completely changed since the event of the Golden Sun 30 years ago, 
Entire civilizations sprang up out of thin air that were supposedly around for thousands of years, yet were nowhere to be found within the completely explorable Wayard and its lore in the first and second entries. Had this game been a spin-off or an alternate universe, it would have worked incredibly well. But since it was tied to the events in the cast of the original games, this history is very clearly written for this game and feels as though it's coming out of nowhere. Even the music that had, in previous entries, nearly immortalized composer Motoi Sakuraba seemed to be lacking something in Dark Dawn and was arguably much more generic and unfinished sounding. As far as the battle system went, some improvements had been made, like characters now carrying through and attacking new targets when their original target had perished, but many found the game's battles overall to be far too easy and had wished for more of a challenge. Many also did not appreciate the fact that the game's optional bosses were essentially rehashes of the post-game bosses from the Lost Age. A lot of the game's reviewers also cited that the game was a little too dialogue-heavy at times, which may seem like a ridiculous statement to make, but many fans also agreed, stating that the amount of chatter and dialogue was seemingly doubled from earlier games. The puzzles, however, were a shining aspect of Dark Dawn, and did well to continue the clever magic and intrigue of the original games. Though the amount of different synergy usable was more limited this time around, the puzzles themselves were well executed and continued to provide the series' classic feeling of achievement when you finally solved them all and reached that ever-elusive treasure. With that said though, the infield synergy was much less varied than it was in the Lost Age, with the developers leaving out synergy like Sand, Cloak, and Hover, arguably some of the most inventive and creative synergy from the older games. The characters of this game were also a mixed bag to some, receiving a bit less characterization than fans were hoping for. Main character Matthew retains his father Isaac's original silent protagonist role, and close friend Tyrell retains the sort of comic relief brawn over Bran's character traits of his father Garrett. And although it's nice to see a nod to the original Golden Sun game, it can be a bit tired and overplayed. Fans were also disappointed that much of the game's runtime is spent with the heroes not focusing on the main goal at hand, and often knowingly getting played and toyed with by the antagonists. It was also disappointing to find most of the original cast missing in action in Dark Dawn, with only Isaac and Garrett appearing on screen and playable for only a short period in the game. This, however, was likely a choice made by the developers to tease the next game and leave fans wondering about these characters. Many felt the villains were also quite less enjoyable and characterized than Saturos and Minardi, and even failed to live up to their worst replacements, Agatio and Karst, from the Lost Age. There are other characters we could talk about, but in the nature of avoiding spoilers, we'll leave them out this time around. In an era ripe with online functionality and ever-popular games like the Pokemon series heavily featuring online battling, there was also none to be found here, which would have been nice to see. The E3 demo of the game was mentioned to have an extra battle mode like the original two games, where it was possible to test strategies and battle friends, which was cut for the final version's release. Unfortunate. Dark Dawn expanded on the original game's story and dialogue choices by providing four emotions displayed via faces, happy, joyful, sad, and angry, that the player could select throughout many scenes, which definitely took the player's interaction with the story to new levels. However, fans were not thrilled to find that compared to the previous game's two choices, the actual results of these choices were much more limited. Nothing changed save for a few lines of dialogue. There was also another problem. Your emotions meant different things depending on the situation, they weren't just catch-all symbols. Sometimes sad could mean, more literally, sad about this current situation, and sometimes it could mean that you disagreed with someone. And without entering spoiler territory for fans who have yet to play Dark Dawn, I'll just add that the overall story of Dark Dawn, what is touched upon, and what is left a mystery in terms of the main storyline, left many fans feeling unfulfilled. Were all these issues with Dark Dawn something that the series has always struggled with, and made more apparent now because of how much older we are? Or was it something else? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. Personally, there were definitely a few story beats I enjoyed as I played through the game, for the most part having to do with the character from the original Golden Sun games, and that experience was a nice gift from Camelot after considering all the mysteries surrounding them over the years. Overall, for me, Dark Dawn was still a great game, one that I'm glad we got at all, and it very obviously left the door wide open for a Golden Sun 4. Unfortunately for all of us though, this has still yet to occur. The Nintendo DS's lifespan is over, and we're even now significantly into the 3DS's life, still without another sequel. Many fans loved the password system linking the first two Golden Sun games, allowing players who achieved everything the first game had to offer to have special rewards and gifts in the second to echo their achievements. Now, with DS and 3DS so far apart, and still no sequel on the horizon, it seems whatever follow-up Dark Dawn had in mind may not be occurring. At the very least, Camelot would have to jump through a lot of hoops to have any sort of password systems linking these newer games. 
Dark Dawn sold 46,000 units in its first four days in Japan and ranked fifth of the period in comparison to the Lost Ages 96,000 units and accolade of being the best-selling game of its time period. But I know what you're thinking. Dark Dawn didn't do nearly enough bad for Camelot to stop making Golden Sun games completely, right? Even though it seems to have done okay when all is said and done, using some input by Redditor Tassadar for ire it seems safe to say that Camelot probably made very little from Dark Dawn after all of its expenses, which doesn't bode well for the next sequel. A new game would be hard to make because there are no longer any guarantees it will sell, as well as the first two, and based off of Dark Dawn, it seems that it would take more than nostalgia alone as a selling point for the next title. Many fans have commented that they feel that Golden Sun deserves a reboot brought to today's standards to re-establish the series. As interesting as this would be, judging by past Nintendo HD reboots like the Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess, they generally don't outsell the original. The original GameCube version of Wind Waker sold 4.6 million units, while its Wii U remake sold only 1.75 million units. Twilight Princess was even worse. Neither of the original two Golden Sun games sold over 2 million copies, and with an even smaller conversion rate than the Zelda games, unfortunately, it's not going to be very likely. So where has Camelot been? Where are the Takahashi brothers and their elaborate plan for the actual big events of the Golden Sun series? To put it bluntly, over the past seven years, they've been solely focusing on Mario sports games, which are decent games objectively because they're being made by a good developer, but they just aren't the same. And even those games are beginning to do less and less well. In short, it seems Camelot used to make good games, but now they make average games. A new avenue has appeared to us on the horizon though. Would it be possible for us to see a Golden Sun revival on the Switch? I guess only time will tell. If we think about the Switch though, and its capabilities compared to the team's work on arcade style games like the Mario Sports series, creating an entire 3D world as elaborate and diverse as Wayard and all of its cultures seems fit to be a daunting task. Could Camelot even pull it off? That much is uncertain. Since Camelot also hasn't been doing too hot lately, a lot of fans are hoping another team will co-develop any future sequels for Golden Sun, many naming Monolith Soft as their first choice. Monolith Soft is a company with a very tight relationship to Nintendo, producing the successful Xenoblade RPG series, as well as even Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Now that I would like to see. In a Nintendo Gamer interview, Hiroyuki Takahashi stated that perhaps if there are enough Nintendo fans asking for another game in the series, it would naturally lead to the development of such game. And even though there are online petitions calling for people to sign and get their attention, we haven't heard anything just yet. And we likely won't be for a long time. But I'm not giving up faith. I'm hoping that someday, the Golden Sun will rise again. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far into the video, comment Sunrise in the comment section below. And also be sure to let me know how you feel about the Golden Sun series, and if you'd be enthralled to see another entry on the Nintendo Switch. If you learned something from this video or enjoyed the nostalgia trip, also be sure to slash that thumbs up down below, and I'll see you in the next episode.